Hello. Hello, hello. Oh, geez, I'm stuck on something. Hey there, Mission Control. Well, in this video, we're gonna go over measuring well depth, and I'm gonna talk to you about the reasons why. Uh, before we do that, first, let's go out to the shop and let's uh, see what tools we're gonna need. And then uh, we'll come back out here and uh, see about taking the well head off and doing all this. I wanna talk to you about why, and uh, that's gonna take a little bit of time. So let's jump into that. Well, if you're watching all the stuff going on in the world today, uh, the virus that's out there, the economy, shipping, logistics, all those things, you're watching that, there's, there's a lot of crazy stuff out there. Our world has become so polarized that even normal reactions to emergency situations are getting negative connotation around them. And what I mean by that is people who prepare, um, I, don't, I don't even want to go so far as preppers, um, but just people who actually stop, think on their own, uh, don't just do what the media tells them or the government tells them, and actually analyze problems on their own, um, and then decide to act in proportional measures to the situation as they see it, they're being criticized for that. Uh, I've been criticized for that. My neighbor is being criticized for that. Others uh, out on YouTube are being criticized for that. In the news media, people are being criticized all over the place because they're choosing to look at a situation from their own perspective and make decisions based on how they see the situation unfolding instead of just doing whatever they're being told to do by whoever they view as being an authoritative figure. I know for me personally, I stopped trusting my government almost over a decade ago. It's really unfortunate. Uh, I think we live in a great country, one of the best on the planet, if not the greatest, and I was proud to serve my country, but the, uh, the, the parties, honestly, I mean, it's just turned into trash. I mean, the people that were getting in there are just trash. Uh, I wanna fire every single one of them because they just don't work together. And uh, I have a major problem with that. And that's the major reason why I stopped trusting them is I just, I don't see them working together at all. It's now my party versus your party and whatever we can do to trash the other one. Anyway, not the point of this video, but I wanted to just say, it, it's not right that people are, are coming down on folks who, like myself, think on our own, do our own math. You know, we use critical thinking skills. Apparently that's outlawed now. You're not allowed to critically think. I guess they stopped teaching that because it's bad. Anyway, my wife and I, uh, we live out in the middle of nowhere, and uh, there's many reasons for that. It's a beautiful place. You've seen previous videos of that. And one of the things that we do believe in is being prepared, uh, being prepared for wildfire, uh, which is a natural threat here. Uh, so having good water, uh, good hoses, uh, looking at how our hay is stored, fire extinguishers, uh, sprinkler system, uh, defensible space. These are all things that we think about as an example. Earthquakes is another one. We don't have them that much here, but you know, being prepared for an earthquake, bolting things to the wall so that if an earthquake happens, you know, stuff does, doesn't fall over. Yeah, being prepared, you know, thinking through things. One of the things that we've been wanting to do for quite some time is to have a backup uh, water supply source. We're on a well, our own private well. Uh, it's pretty deep and uh, about, oh, it's gonna be over like 200 feet deep. And what we need to do uh, to do that, you know, we've been thinking about that for quite some time. Uh, my neighbor, Wrangler Star, he recently got a hand pump and we're considering doing the same. We gotta see how much it's gonna cost though. So in this video, I'm gonna go over how to measure your well uh, depth. Now I've never done it before, I'm not a professional, so I'll probably screw it up and there'll be plenty of comments down below which will help everyone come behind me uh, that watches this and they'll see those comments of you smart people who know everything uh, and uh, know how to do it better than me. Uh, you'll, you'll be able to correct them. So it will be helpful to everyone, even if I do screw it up. So uh, what we're gonna do today, we're gonna actually gonna go out. I'm gonna take this little plumb bob here and then I have a really big uh, reel here, uh, 300 feet, which will be more than enough. We're gonna attach these two things to each other and then uh, take the well head off and uh, drop that down. Listen for the plunk, which will measure our static, uh, static depth. And then we'll let it go all the way down until it stops on the reel. And that'll measure our true depth of the well, uh, total depth. 
A lot of people think that if something goes bad, you just run your generators. Well, that's true, we do have generators. In fact, we have three generators. We have one at the house, one out here, and a biogas generator that will be hooked up to our digester uh, once we get it up and running again. And if you get that digester going, we're in a really good spot, and having a backup well hand pump isn't that big a deal. We do have solar panels, but they're grid-tied solar panels, and to get them off the grid is gonna cost like $8,000, $10,000, because you've got to buy a different inverter, some batteries, and it's just a big mess. I, and uh, we just don't have that money. Someday I'd like to. Um, so uh, you can only store so much gas for your generators. And I want to bring up a situation that I think is the most likely thing to happen in all this stuff that's going on. I think uh, the grid's not going to go down. I, I don't think that's going to happen. Uh, what I do think is that we'll get into heavy wind season, which for us is in the summer, uh, and something's gonna fall over uh, onto the power lines, or uh, there'll be a wildfire that will take out, um, you know, a, a, what is that, a distribution station, um, or something like that. But people are gonna be sick, and the response time uh, for us out in this rural area is gonna be so long that will start running out of fuel. If that situation occurs, and if it happens for um, a prolonged period of time, then I would like to have a backup way to put water into my pressure tank uh, that is not fuel dependent or energy dependent, just in case. It's a nice, good, positive investment. It adds value to our property. Uh, if we lose everything and we have to sell, then what we're doing will not hurt it. It will just increase the value because it adds value. It was like, oh, wow, we've got a backup on the well. So uh, that's why I want to do it. Uh, there'll be many people, I'm sure, that will absolutely criticize me. Somehow they will take what I'm saying as being fear-mongering instead of just using your damn brain and thinking. Like, just everybody take a deep breath and be like, okay, let's look around our house and let's see things that maybe, you know, we need to change to be prepared so that we don't just depend on a system that is honestly quite fragile. Look down at California this last summer and see all the wildfires that happened. They shut down the grid. I mean, stores were losing their butts on uh, retail stores because they, they couldn't keep the power going. There was a rush on gasoline. The local distribution failed. All you have to do is open your eyes and look around you and you see how sensitive our system is. Not not, we're not talking like the big Katrinas or the Cascadia quakes that, you know, who knows when those are going to happen. We're talking about everyday stuff like a wildfire that is becoming very much every day. So uh, what I'm talking about is not at all a stretch of any form of imagination. It is literally looking at what happened down in California in 2019 in the summer, less than 10 months ago, and saying, oh, that could actually really happen here too, you know. So let's have a backup plan. Anyway, that was kind of a rant. Sorry about that. Uh, no, not sorry. Not sorry, because it's all true and I wanted to share it. And if you guys are gonna criticize me, you need to criticize me with all the information. So I'm gonna do this because I've looked at the situation. I've seen what's going on. And we don't even know how much it's gonna cost yet. I think I know roughly how much it's gonna cost. So what we're gonna do is take these measurements and we're gonna get a price quote back uh, from the company, Simple Pumps. We're gonna see, um, see see what they say, and uh, we're gonna go from there. There's another company called Bison Pumps, by the way. Um, I've looked at both of them uh, before even Cody Wranglish, our neighbor, bought stuff. And uh, the nice thing about the Simple Pumps better than the um, Outback Pumps is that Simple Pumps allows you to actually pump back into your system and pressurize your pressure tank. So uh, that's a huge thing for us because that means you get to use all your existing uh, infrastructure and not have to change it all, which means we can have water out here, at the house, at the site. It'll be fully operational because the pressure tank serves everything. So let's get this stuff hooked up and then let's go figure out how to take a wellhead off, which is freaking me out. So here's our wellhead. And when we bought the property, uh, we've been here for almost nine, going on 10 years. Uh, this is all here. Uh, it's a really good well. Uh, really good flow rate in the well. I love the water. It's got some minerals in it, uh, some calcium, so we get a little bit of white uh, in the dishwasher and all that, but we use a, a magnetic device to help it so it doesn't stick so much. It's been working pretty good. What we need to do is take the well head off, which has one, two, three, four, five 
uh, looks like 7 16 pop this thing off of there so here's the tools we're going to need to do this job pen and paper with our measurements that we need to take measuring tape just to measure the well we're going to need our long measuring tape with the plumb bob secured on the end very secured we don't want to lose that that's our only weight ratchet and a wrench and cell phone or camera to take a picture there we go they want a picture of the well head in order to give you a quote so we got that i feel like i'm opening up a gateway here not not in that crazy person kind of way but just in this thing goes down into the earth a long long way behind me is darla the cow mooing she's been out having nice fresh grass for the last 24 hours yet she still feels the need to eat more there's bandit here to check this out now i could use a uh impact wrench for this but i don't want to break the uh bolts on this they've been here for a while and once you open this you want to get it closed as quickly as we can we don't want anything crawling down in there and creating any problems i know when i was younger the wells that we had the water wasn't all that good in them so you actually had to pour bleach down there from time to time to clean out the well in nine years we have not put bleach into this thing at all and i don't want to it's working good it's pumping good and it has good quality water coming out of it there's nothing like good quality water those definitely have been on there for a while house was built in 99 well was put in the same time it makes sense that these things are a little tight coming off don't you hate it when the it's like loose enough to where the ratchet doesn't work all that well but still a little tight they have a actual device uh, well you can make one i guess it's like a little cup so that and it has a hole in the bottom so that you can just drop it down there and then the cord that your measuring cord will go slack as soon as it hits the water so you take your measurement there and then as it fills full of water it continues its journey to the bottom of the well again i'm just a normal guy i haven't done this before so i read about how people do it that's how i figured this out we called to have someone measure it for those that are wondering why don't you have the professionals come out and do it because the pros want a thousand bucks to do what i'm about to show you and that's just stupid in theory this will come off hello 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 all right so i'm just reaching down there to make sure i have a clear path down because there's a bunch of wires in there so you got the pump wires all bundled up in there all right so here we go Make sure that's secure. All right. Yeah, it's getting around that darn wire. It's gonna be the first, first challenge here. So I take that. So what I'm going to do, here is what I read about this thing is it's gonna make a great, it's gonna go poosh when it gets down and you hear that echo uh, coming up the pipe. Uh, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pull out a bunch of uh, uh, tape here because this is pretty loud, hear that in the mic? And I don't know how loud the sploosh is gonna be, uh, but as soon as I hear the sploosh, I stop the drop and then uh, take the measurement there. So let's pull this out what I understand to be the depth here is 175 feet to water that's what we were told I'm just gonna lay this all out probably drop out what this is a 300 foot roll Wow 88 feet hey you you're not supposed to be playing around with this stuff. yeah he's like what are you doing and that looks like something I could play with. That's what he's saying. 132. No. 148. So again, the reason I'm doing this is just because of the noise that this thing makes. It's pretty loud. And 
and I just don't want to, you know, miss the sploosh and have to do this a bunch of times. 185. There's 209. So, here we go. Oops, let's... Whoa! 40 feet! <laughs> That's at 40 feet! Let's do that again. I thought that was going to be a lot deeper. Wow! Okay. Here, guys. I'm going to move you closer. Oops. Move you around a little bit. Try to get you guys a good sound here. Alright. Above. There it is. So, right here. That's 40. That's 40 feet. Okay. So, let's take a note of that. 40 feet. That is our static level. Now, it is winter. Oops, sorry. We're going to take a note of that. That is our winter time. 40 feet winter. Uh, winter time levels. It's, we're going to have to do this during summer now just to see. Okay, so down we go. What? That's not a 175 foot well. That's like not even close. Well, I'll be darned. I am hung up on some. Oh, is that the pump? I think it was around the pump. That's feeling pretty darn slack to me. Okay, so there I'm up. I mean, that's slack. Come on, where are you at? There, I'm picking up at 84. Eighty-four feet. So my total depth is eighty-four feet. That's really interesting because previous owner said it was one seventy-five. Just don't know if I trust that. This is obviously weighted. Picking up weight right there. Let's do it standing. I guess I can get better. Right there. It says 84 feet. Right to the top. It's really interesting. I'm glad I got the really big freaking measuring tape, huh? <laughs> oh, geez, I'm stuck on something. Oh, there we go. I think I'm around the pump. Oh, I'm below the well casing, maybe? No, that doesn't make any sense. I'm stuck on something, guys. Uh oh. Okay, well, some things we learned that I got to pass on to you that uh, you won't make the same mistake. Okay, first. Going down, coming up. These wires are just tucked in there, so you can pull those out and you get a lot straighter drop, which is a good thing. Uh, the weight, you don't need a super heavy weight uh, to drop it down, just uh, probably a few ounces. You don't need that big plumb bob that I had. And uh, measuring tape, definitely this tape works great. Uh, some things that uh, they suggest you do, I was reading a little bit here while I was playing around with getting this thing out. Uh, is to pour some bleach on this and uh, just help keep it cleaner. I didn't do that. It is what it is at this point for me. Uh, here's the mistake. Here's the big thing I learned. Um, I put that plumb bob on and I had it bolted to the end of this. Now, uh, that plumb bob is way too big. You don't need that. And what happened is there's, there's, there's a casing down there, right, this thing. 
and there's a liner and then there's a pump and it the plumb bob went past it but on the way back up it was getting caught on something so the plumb bob has that nice straight down you know shape when it's going down so it, it's it snuck past everything got to the bottom of the well but on the way back up uh two things happened well a few things i think happened one this section right here is just too big uh and it was getting hung up on stuff uh two there's a little claw that comes out like that and i think it was getting hung up on stuff and three that plumb bob had a big fat top and it was getting hung up i'm pretty sure right around the pump so I basically just had to sit here for a long time just fishing, basically just jigging. And then I started jigging more and getting a little more vibration. And eventually what happened is the bolt that I had on there uh, backed out and I lost my weight. So I added a chunk of brass to my well. Uh, brass uh, isn't horrible. It's not great. Uh, certainly it's a mistake. <laughs> but anyway we got our measurements so oh gee whiz it's just another day and everything works still i didn't hurt it got a pump still kicks on still have water life is good uh but anyway there's some lessons learned so some things not to do don't use a really big plumb bob use a, a weight and uh use make sure that whatever you have that's attached to your tape at the end there is very small uh, and doesn't have a hook that comes out. I probably what I should have done is taped this and I think I would have been fine taped it probably with even just a thing of lead in it uh, You'd like a you know fishing weight. It's not really a lead anymore. I guess but like a, it's an alloy But uh, that would have been enough to drop it down there Didn't need that big plumb bob So that's life. Let's get this thing all boxed up and the really cool thing though about all this uh, I get upset. If you can't tell, I get really upset at myself when things go wrong. Well's working, pump's working. Um, is that I, I was told that the well was 175 feet. And at 40 feet to get water and 84 feet total depth, that is just amazing. That is gonna save us a ton of money on this well, uh, potential getting this manual well uh pump so i'm really excited about that turn that off interesting though getting in i've never done this before so you know hey lessons learned if you're going to do stuff on your own i'm, I'm just going to be honest with everybody you know you're going to make mistakes should i have paid a thousand dollars for somebody else to come out and do this i mean that wasn't even an option so uh, i'm i'm upset at myself for stuff that i really didn't know i was so excited when it dropped down there and it just went down nice and got through everything and we got the measurements and then you know coming back up like get it is literally just like fishing you get out there and you hit a snag you know and it's all just locked up on you and i consider breaking the line just like fishing but i was trying trying to get it where i could get that all out i got the line all out so that's good because that's plastic and didn't want that down there but i'm upset that the weight came off i mean you know whatever i'm gonna go beat myself up now I can't believe that it's at 40 feet and the total depth is 84. That shocks me. That is a shocker. I mean, that's like down at the bottom of the field, 84 feet down. That is just amazing how water works like that, how it comes up this close to the surface. But down there, I mean, down 84 feet is the bottom of the field. So literally, why isn't there water down there? You know, things that still pop my noodle. Hey, why did that have to fall? Oh, at least I got it out. Oh man, I forgot to measure the inner diameter. Looks like six inch. All right, so the next part of this project is go to simplepump.com, which I'm at right now, and they have a request form here. So we'll put in all the pertinent information. It's asking you who will do the install. I'll do it myself. Static water level in feet, 40. Submersible through side of casing, 64. I think that's where the pump is at. Depth of well is 84. Recovery rate, freeze line. Where is your well? Outside. Inside diameter. Casing rise above the ground. Yes, I want to pump to home's pressure tank. All right, vertical rise, yes. It's about 10 feet. Might you be interested in adding a motor? Yes, in the future. Okay, anything? Oh, it wants me to attach pictures.
do that, I will have to email said pictures to myself. Okay. So I'm going to get those uh, pictures uploaded here and then uh, send this off and we'll see what the quote looks like. Uh, and then we'll make a decision from there on if we're going to go with the manual well pump or not. I'm excited to potentially get this pump here and get it in now that it's only 40 feet down. Um, that should have a pretty radical uh, change on the price. So uh, we'll see how that all goes. But hope you enjoyed this quick video. I certainly learned a lot. I hope I passed on a lot for you guys. Uh, if you're uh, trying to do this, you can you know, find ways uh, to not make my mistakes. Uh, it's all about that casing down there at the bottom and the liner. That, that's the part that really got me. So uh, anyway, good things for, uh, for others to, uh, who are do-it-yourselfers to learn from my mistakes. So I guess even though I get to look like an idiot, <laughs> you guys get to learn from it. So if you did enjoy this video, be sure to give it a thumbs up and hit subscribe. You know, people are getting unsubscribed from videos these days. So uh, be sure that you do resubscribe even if you are already there uh, and ring the bell for notifications so you get notified when I put out new videos. Also you can follow us on Facebook, Twitter and on Instagram for a little more up-to-date information since the videos are a little behind real time. And uh, if you'd like to help us out you could do so through Patreon. In the meantime everybody this is The Real Martian. Out.